Slide 1. Welcome to Health Management Information Systems, Patient Monitoring Systems. This is Lecture B. The component Health Management Information Systems is a theory component that provides an introduction to healthcare applications and the systems that use them, health information technology standards, health-related data structures, and enterprise architecture in healthcare organizations. Lecture B discusses how telehealth communication technologies support clinical care, explains the effectiveness and economic benefit of telehealth, and examines the role smart technology in the home and remote links to health information systems play in enhancing the quality of patient care. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, Patient Monitoring Systems, are to describe the purpose, attributes, and functions of patient monitoring systems. Discuss ways in which automation can improve the quality of patient care. Analyze how the integration of data from many sources assists in making clinical decisions. Slide 3. Additional objectives for this unit, Patient Monitoring Systems, are to Discuss how telehealth communication technologies support clinical care. Discuss the effectiveness and economic benefit of telehealth and examine how smart technology in the home and remote links to health information systems can enhance the quality of patient care. Slide 4. As you learned in the first lecture, both patient monitoring systems and telehealth are considered to be a type of M-Health technology. Rosemary Nelson, chair of the m hims Task Force, described the most commonly used M-Health technologies as, quote, mobile phones, smartphones, Personal Digital Assistance, PDA, Palm Top Computer or Personal Data Assistant, Wireless Tablet Computers, Wearable Wireless Biosensors, and or Wireless Chronic Disease Monitoring Devices. mHealth Applications, apps, which are software loaded on any of the above mobile devices that aid in collecting community and clinical health data, delivery of healthcare information to practitioners, researchers, and patients, real-time monitoring of patient vital signs and direct provision of care, end quote. Nelson, 2012, paragraph 2. Lecture B will focus on telehealth and the role of smart technology in the home. Slide 5. To gain an understanding of what telehealth is requires a review of the definitions used in the industry. Three will be provided. First, according to the Health Resources and Services Administration, HRSA, quote, telehealth is the use of electronic information and telecommunications technologies to support long-distance clinical health care, patient and professional health-related education, public health, and health administration, end quote, HRSA, no date, paragraph 1. HRSA includes video conferencing, the Internet, store and forward imaging, streaming media, and terrestrial and wireless communications in their description of technologies associated with telehealth, HRSA, no date. Equipment used in telehealth may include computers, fax machines, telephones, video monitors, robotics, and telecommunication networks connecting two or more sites. Subsets of telehealth are telemedicine, telenursing, teleradiology, telepathology, etc. Slide 6. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, has a slightly different definition. According to CMS, quote, telehealth, or telemonitoring, is the use of telecommunications and information technology to provide access to health assessment, diagnosis, intervention, consultation, supervision, and information across distance. Telehealth includes such technologies as telephones, facsimile machines, electronic mail systems, and remote patient monitoring devices, which are used to collect and transmit patient data for monitoring and interpretation. While they do not meet the Medicaid definition of telemedicine, they are often considered under the broad umbrella of telehealth services. Even though such technologies are not considered, quote, telemedicine, they may nevertheless be covered and reimbursed as part of a Medicaid coverable service, such as laboratory service, x-ray service, or physician services under Section 1905A of the Social Security Act, end quote. CMS, no date, paragraphs 7 through 8. As one can see, the CMS definition is slanted towards payment policy. 
Slide 7. The final definitions are from the American Telemedicine Association. Their definitions are, quote, telehealth and telemedicine. Telemedicine and telehealth both describe the use of medical information exchanged from one site to another via electronic communications to improve patients' health status. Although evolving, telemedicine is sometimes associated with direct patient clinical services, and telehealth is sometimes associated with a broader definition of remote healthcare services. Telematics, the use of information processing based on a computer in telecommunications, and the use of telecommunications to permit computers to transfer programs and data to one another. Telemonitoring, the process of using audio, video, and other telecommunications and electronic information processing technologies to monitor the health status of a patient from a distance. End quote. ATA, no date, page 6. Slide 8. There are three general areas where telehealth supports clinical care. They are long-distance clinical health care. For example, telehealth permits the provision of care in situations where a face-to-face -face meeting between patient and provider may be impossible or costly. This may occur, for example, by store and forward technology, which captures clinical information, for example, images, video, audio, or x-rays, and forwards it to another clinical site for evaluation. Patient and professional health-related education for example, telehealth has the capability to provide professional education to wide geographic areas. Public Health and Health Administration. For example, telehealth can make available health care to underserved communities where otherwise this care would not be available. Each area will be examined in the next few slides. Slide 9. Telehealth supports clinical care by allowing long-distance health care. The location of where telehealth is possible includes rural or remote areas, schools, prisons, and the home, to name a few. Some of the more common applications for telehealth with regards to clinical initiatives are client monitoring, diagnostic evaluation, and data exchange, such as real-time video images. Benefits to using telehealth include improved access to care, including specialist care, that is the ability to extend the geographic reach of medical care and provide access to medical specialists in remote and rural areas. Elimination of the barrier of distance. For example, patients receive needed care without the cost of traveling, patients can be checked on more frequently, and more timely initiation of treatment, which can mean problems are addressed before they worsen and result in the need for hospitalization. For example, in diagnostic evaluation, a medical consultation can be performed via a telecommunication system. With the use of equipment, such as an online stethoscope, electronic examination is possible, resulting in a diagnosis and decision regarding treatment. Telehealth provides the capability to perform an exam, make a more timely diagnosis, and institute treatment that might otherwise not have been received. This area of telehealth can improve health care quality and reduce disparities while also increasing convenience for patients. Regarding patient monitoring and data exchange, Mostashari, 2010, a senior advisor from the Office of the National Coordinator, testified that, quote, home monitoring can place daily metrics of patient health, weight, blood pressure, and other vital measures in patients' and providers' hands improving chronic care management and patient engagement. Early detection of problems made possible with real-time information but not imaginable through office visits at six-month intervals can help avoid unneeded hospitalizations for patients with heart failure and other chronic conditions. Secure sharing and remote reading of patient information such as radiographic images on high-speed channels can improve care coordination and reduce the risk of medical errors. End quote, page 4. Slide 10. Telehealth supports clinical care by providing patient and professional health-related education. Some of the more common applications for telehealth with regards to patient and professional health-related education are distance education provided simultaneously to groups on-site and off-site, or to individuals off-site, educational support to patients and caregivers, and clinical and consultative services to residents. Benefits to using telehealth in this area are similar to those mentioned previously. They include 
improved access to education programs and instructors, reduced training and educational costs, elimination of the barrier of distance, thereby providing educational content that normally would not be available, and enhanced communication as the education can occur at any time, issues and questions can be addressed real-time. For example, the use of audio, video, and other telecommunications and electronic information processing technologies to provide individual education to a distant clinician on a new medical procedure. Slide 11. Telehealth supports clinical care by allowing connections of healthcare professionals to various individuals involved in public health and health administration. Some of the more common applications for telehealth with regards to public health and health administration are video conferencing for such things as discussions of professional concerns, unusual cases, or risk management, research dialogues with individuals in distant locations, and data exchange. Benefits to using telehealth are similar to those mentioned previously. They include improved access to information, elimination of the barrier of distance, and more timely interventions. Slide 12. The previous few slides provided some examples of the benefits of telehealth from the perspective of the general areas where telehealth supports clinical care. Looking at telehealth from a different view, that is, the effectiveness and economic benefits, Miller and Young, as cited in Hebda, Zar, and Mascara, 1998, state the following advantages of telehealth. Quote, greater access to care provides earlier treatment for the client, reducing the number of interventions required. Treatment can be provided closer to home, often eliminating costly travel and greater urban medical costs. Video consultations between a rural clinic and a specialist can eliminate sometimes prohibitive travel for patients. Home monitoring can eliminate unnecessary visits by a nurse to the home or by the client to the emergency room. Specialist advice is more easily accessible, improving the quality of care. End quote. Page 251. Slide 13. Additional advantages of telehealth that Miller and Young, as cited in Hebda, Zar, and Mascara, 1998, identified are, quote, physician extenders, such as physician assistants and nurse practitioners, can provide care in remote locations with the assurance of physician availability if needed. Continuous care is provided through use of local practitioners delivering immediate and follow-up care. Video conferencing opens up new possibilities for continuing education for isolated or rural health practitioners who may not be able to leave a rural practice to take part in professional meetings or educational courses. Video conferencing can also provide education to clients at home and in rural settings. End quote. Page 251. Slide 14. According to Miller and Young, 2000, successful telehealth programs, quote, tend to be well integrated into existing procedures using existing infrastructures where possible to save money and avoid wasteful duplication and provide an obvious improvement over alternative mechanisms, end quote, pages 229 to 230. Slide 15. The Veterans Administration has developed and implemented a telehealth program. The program consists of placing medical devices in patient homes. Quote, Veterans use the home devices to capture various measurements, including blood glucose, blood pressure, pulse from the blood pressure device, temperature, weight, pain, pulse oximetry, and pulse from the pulse oximetry device. All these measurements are obtained from measurement devices, except pain, which is subjective which are connected to the home device. The home device sends the measurements to a national vendor server located within the VA network, and it sends those measurements to VHA systems where their VA providers can view them. The purpose of this program is to improve the quality of care and standard of living for veterans throughout the U.S. End quote. Fahima, 2009. Your assignment for this unit will provide additional information on this program. Slide 16. Given what you have learned about telehealth and remote patient monitoring, you should recognize now how closely intertwined these two are. For example, you know both are considered to be a type of M-Health technology. To review, telehealth is the use of electronic information and telecommunications technologies to support long-distance clinical health care, 
patient and professional health-related education, public health and health administration. The Center for Technology and Aging 2011 states remote patient monitoring includes a number of technologies such as point-of-care monitoring devices which may stand alone or become part of an integrated health data collection, analysis, and reporting system between the devices, patients, and clinicians. Smart technology in the home would involve the use of telehealth and remote patient monitoring devices integrated with health information systems. The technology can be used to remotely monitor a patient's symptoms and vital signs, immediately and automatically transmit it to healthcare providers and caregivers for informed medical decision making and care coordination. Home monitoring systems could automatically collect and store patient data from various systems and provide for remote monitoring and health delivery telehealth technologies. The medical home care model also calls for extensive use of health information technologies. Slide 17. As reported by Godert, 2010, AT&T will sell diabetes self-management software from WellDoc Communications Incorporated that operates on smartphones. Godert, 2010, states, quote, WellDoc's Diabetes Manager system received FDA clearance in August. The application enables type 2 diabetic patients to enter their blood sugar readings into their mobile phone and receive real-time feedback on what they should eat and other ways they can help stabilize their blood sugar. The software also can alert patients when they need to test their levels. Further, the application sends the data to vendor servers where it is analyzed and can be accessed by the patient's physicians and disease management case workers. It also can support glucose meters that can send data via Bluetooth wireless technology. AT&T will make Diabetes Manager and other WellDoc applications available on all wireless networks and compatible with most major phones and operating systems, according to the companies. End quote. Paragraph 2. This is an example of how smart technology uses telecommunications and remote monitoring devices integrated with health information systems. Slide 18. This concludes patient monitoring systems. Lecture A defined eHealth, mHealth, patient monitoring systems, described the purpose, attributes, and functions of patient monitoring systems, looked at common primary applications for patient monitoring systems, discussed ways in which remote patient monitoring systems can improve the quality of patient care, and reviewed how the integration of data from patient monitoring devices assists in making clinical decisions. Lecture B discussed how telehealth communication technologies support clinical care, explained the effectiveness and economic benefit of telehealth, and examined the role smart technology in the home and remote links to health information systems play in enhancing the quality of patient care.